I thank Mr. Park for asking me to give him a testimony. And all the testimonies that has been before has been a real blessing to me, each and every one of them. I get something out of them all. But I think whenever I have my back done the night, if I get it done, it's only fair that he runs it on for two or three years to everybody's up here, each and every one of these. <clears throat> well, I had one of the great, greatest privileges, or I'm glad I have a testimony to give to saving and keeping power of the Lord Jesus Christ, but I had one of the best privileges ever anybody could have, and that was being brought up in a Christian home where my, both mom and daddy were saved, and, and <clears throat> you come in at night, or before you go to bed, one of them was sitting on one side, and another was sitting there reading the Bible, and that had a great impression in me, but just because you're born into a Christian home doesn't mean that you're saved yourself. And <clears throat> we went along to Cabra Church at that time, and Mr. Kearns was the minister. And I was under conviction of sin for weeks and weeks. And, and there wasn't a time in my life that I didn't know that I needed to be saved. But I was frightened even of going to sleep at the age of eight and nine and ten, because I knew if I, if I didn't wake, and that I would land up in hell. But I woke one morning. And mommy always made a fry, and somebody said, what's a fry to do your testimony? But a fry has a fry's on my testimony, because mommy was making the fry up in the living room, and I went up, and I says, mommy, I'm going to get saved today. And the Lord had been convicting me for weeks, and I just made up my mind that I was going to get saved. And at that time, there was somebody saved every Sunday night. Granny Chestnut loved me us, and every night I come home, she said, Stephen, who got saved tonight? She didn't say, was there anybody saved? She said, who got saved? And there was for maybe nine or ten months, there was somebody got saved every night. So, Mommy says, you don't have to wait till the evening service to get saved. You can get saved now. And I says, I know that, but I want to put up my hand and I want to talk to Mr. Kearns. So, whenever the evening service came, Mr. Kearns preached and he made the appeal as usual. And I put up my hand and went into the inquiry room and I could tell you every detail Mr. Kearns had a big Bible and he put it in my wee hand, I was only ten, and he said, you have a weight, you're carrying a weight of sin, and he says, if you ask Jesus into your heart tonight, he'll take away your sin, so he put the Bible in my hand and it went away down, and I says, I know, and I <clears throat> didn't know what was going to take place, so I thought you'd enter this inquiry room, that's wee room, and you had to cry and shout and scream, and I just hadn't a clue of what took place, but it was so simple and so good anyway, and I asked Jesus into my heart that night and got down my knees and asked him to forgive my sins. I was born in sin and, and to take away my sin. But like Julie and a whole lot of other ones that gave their testimony, I had no assurance of salvation. I asked Jesus into my heart for years. I said that wee prayer, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come into today, come into stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, every night. And it was just through reading John's Gospel or reading God's Word and depending on God's Word that I got assurance of salvation. And <clears throat> there was one other time, Noel Halliday and me was cutting size to two boys in Akidui, and the two neighbours came out with their tea, and they, uh, they asked us, you know, how do you know the Bible's true? Or how do you know that God came into the world and died on the cross? Surely nobody came back to tell you. And, well, Noel helped me out. It was getting it tight for I That was a big question, but... I said, I, all, all I have is John 6 and 37, all the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no ways cast out, and that's, he didn't cast me out, and he took me in, and that's all I have, and no will give a verse or two. But that day, for the first time, I realized that all I had was them verses in the Bible. If you take faith out of it, all I had was faith in the verses in the Bible, you had nothing. And he said, if an angel come back and told me, nobody come back to tell us the Bible was true or Jesus was there, if an angel come and told you, you'd believe. Well, I says, if an angel come and told you the night, you'd believe. And he says, aye. And then I says, you'd get into Philip in the morning, you'd say, Philip, I believe that Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood. And I believe that an angel come back and tell me. And then Philip said, he would say, you're a liar. I didn't believe you. I says, he says, an angel would have to come to everybody and tell them. So that's where faith comes in. But the Lord gives me <coughs> a lot of opportunities through my work to witness. And uh, <coughs> another story I'll tell you. Uh, as well. <clears throat> I'll leave that to a minute or two. And I thank the Lord for all my Christian influences in my life. I see Samuel Stevenson down here the night. He was a good friend to me at school and kept me in the straight and narrow. And Margaret Carey there, I thank her for the Scripture Union and all the <clears throat> help she was to me. 
I was just a young boy like everybody else at school. I wasn't going to say that in my testimony, but I maybe will say it. And <clears throat> I always would like to went to a disco in the school, but Margaret, she always had a video there. Margaret doesn't know that's either, but I said I was going to the video or there was a thing instead of going to the disco. But I thought, I maybe if I went to this disco, I'd maybe get a girl or something. So I walked down the back door and through the out and through the front door and then went to the video. But I thank Margaret for having another thing there. So maybe if I'd have got a girl, it would have been a disaster. It wouldn't have been as good as the one I had. <clears throat> no, the Lord gave me many opportunities at work. And every time you're speaking to something, you don't know whether it's the last time or not. I worked to a man maybe for 25 years and never mentioned religion. Never mentioned religion. And it never come up. Or, and then one day I was working and he came into the field. And he'd bought that sort of farm down the road and he was wanting a wee bit of work done. And if anybody goes into the field, I usually stop the tractor and take a cup of tea because maybe you don't see any of the rest of the day. So he started to ask me these questions about the difference in my religion and his religion and, and about the forgiveness of sins and about getting to heaven and how you were sure you would get to heaven. And with the greatest chart, and I felt the Lord's presence very near. It was just the greatest chart. And it was over an hour because when I was writing down the night, I was an hour and 20 minutes. I had to write for the bell. I was talking to this man for an hour and 20 minutes. And, it was the greatest day, but about three days later, four days later, I got a phone call, and the boy says, Church, <coughs> church is dead. He was, he was found. <coughs> Lying dead. <coughs> you never know, <coughs> now you're talking to somebody, whether it's the last time. So I hope George asked forgiveness for his son. But then I had another great experience because I wanted to see his wife. <coughs> and uh, I told her that I wanted to tell her everything <coughs> that her husband had said before he died. <coughs> and I had a great time with her as well. She saw and the tears streamed in her face. And it was another <coughs> great experience. But I just thank the Lord for... <coughs> Being my best friend, I can talk to him during the day or on the tractor or at night or any time. just can shoot a prayer up to him. And he's my best friend. And I thank everybody in the congregation for being my friend as well because they're part of my testimony and part of my life. I just love the church. And I thank all the past ministers and all the past youth leaders and everybody. There's a wee song. I was at a concert one night and a wee song sung and the chorus was this year. And I said, that's my testimony. And it goes like this here. Greatly blessed, highly favoured, and perfect but forgiven, child of God. And that's me, because I'm greatly blessed, I'm highly favoured, and I'm very much imperfect but forgiven, child of God. And Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9 says, But for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. And I'd like to thank God for his gift to me. And never, every day I thank him. And I just can't believe how he looked on a... Uh, so imperfect person like me and, and dream me on to himself and if there's anybody in here tonight and they never have asked forgiveness of their sins or asked Jesus into their heart I would urge them to do it because I always say I'm the happiest man and bally money with so little but I have everything I have a lovely wife and a lovely family and I have Jesus as my best friend thank you